I'm gonna smash that. Something for you, that. Hey, so welcome home. Thank you, Cloda. Thank you so much. Now, before all that, we're discussing today's biggest headlines with Giles Brandreth and Tim Campbell. Guys, oh, guys. wasn't that amazing? That was awful. <laughs> that I've was never the, felt so sick in my life. The best TV April Fool ever. <laughs> Did you two know? No, we, we didn't, but we, we didn't began to think something was happening. Did we began, you? We decided to film it. Oh. We actually filmed the moment. But we, yeah. I didn't at all. I, I really wanted to ask her the question about what she's going to do with the money. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do with the money. Just bring her back she's, and ask her. She's a superb. I mean, Judy Dench could not have done that better. <laughs> oh, Judy <laughs> Dench. But, but Vanessa was incredible. Honestly, she was totally she incredible. She had me going. Of course, she had all, she did. Of us going. all of us going. It was brilliant. Oh, it was brilliant. Anyway, I'm, I think I'm just about over it, so we can now talk about our king, because he's out and about, isn't yeah. it? Which is lovely. It is wonderful. As we know, the king was diagnosed with cancer and has been having treatment and has been working, doing his state duties. He's been receiving ambassadors, meeting people. In fact, last week, he had a group meeting of people from different religious faiths, because mm. he's very much into that in the run-up to Easter. But this was the first time he'd been on Walkabout. 56 handshakes, for those who were counting carefully, took place. He did 56 handshakes? Uh, 56 after he came out Aww. of church. Uh, on Easter Sunday, and Queen Camilla, wearing a very fine, can't call it an Easter bonnet, more of a glorious Easter hat, but it's good news. Do you know what? He looked quite well. Yeah. He looked he's, really well. He still does the red box, doesn't he? He That's, does. Yeah. He, he's doing his work every day. He's saying that he's frustrated about it. He's told one of the people he shook hands with yesterday that he was doing his best, keeping going. So all the official stuff that he's supposed to do as the head of state, he is doing. But the extra stuff, the going out and about, the walkabouts, yeah. I think yeah. we're going to gradually see those returning. I you think can... it's been such a great thing, though, particularly around the diagnosis and conversation about cancer. Coincidentally, obviously, I've got the badge on. But I think for those men who are uh, thinking about the age, the ethnicity, and those risk factors associated, it shows that life continues on, because when you hear the big C announcement, as I've heard mm. myself, you sometimes think, oh my gosh, that's it. Yeah. But actually, there is another side to mm. it, and he's actually persevering and carrying on. So I think he's a great ambassador for more men to go yes. and get their health checked. I agree. Yeah. Just you said about the badge. What is that badge? Prostate cancer. Lovely. So particularly for us boys, it's very important we go and get our checks, go onto the site, do the, the rudimentary elements, and if there is any family history, if you have the ethnicity, uh, particularly if you're black, there's four, one in four chance that you might actually contract it. So therefore, go and get the checks as early as possible. Mm, that's Thanks, Tim. Definitely. Isn't? Just get in there straight away. Uh, I mean, this is a sad stat, this. Um, mm. More than 250 needless deaths occur each week due to A&E weights. A new study has suggested was 14,000 people died needlessly in England last year due to excessively long A&E waits of up to 12 hours. Tim, let's hand this to you. Uh, it's really sad for me because there's some great examples of when the NHS really steps in. So, for, particularly for me, a couple of weeks ago, my mother-in-law in hospital, brilliant treatment all the way through from beginning to end. Um, both her and my sister have been NHS workers themselves, right? So I have a huge passion around it. Yeah. We celebrated in 2012 the NHS. We had the whole conversation about, we must say, particularly after COVID, clapping our nurses. So now to hear this statistic after billions have gone in, that if you are in A&E or waiting for in excess of eight hours, there is a one in a 72 chance that you might actually pass away. And for me, that is incredibly sad because we should be trusting that the NHS is going to be there to look after us. And unfortunately, we have the debate now around what are we going to do to make sure that the NHS workers are supported, but more so that when we need care, whether it's cancer or anything else, that we can turn up to the NHS, which we hold as our, our jewel in the crown. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we're not getting the service that we're actually paying. So what, do we, what needs to be done? This is the big question. I mean, it is worth repeating that actually for most people, the A&E experience is a good one. Mm -hmm. We had a, one of our grandchildren had to go to A&E last week, was seen almost immediately, really thorough, has been asked to go back for something further. Couldn't have been better done. Yeah. So that's most people's experience. The real dilemma here is what is to be done? You were telling me, you had the statistics of how much money is spent each year on the NHS. 180 it? billion. 180 billion, billion pounds. So it's more money than ever more people than ever, more medicines being distributed Correct. than ever, and yet we see these problems. And what is the answer? One of the difficulties for party, political parties of every stripe is that they're nervous of saying, can we really look at this? Can we see examples from other countries? Do we have to rethink this in the long term? Mm. Because every government is saying, we're going to spend more money, we're going to try and get on top of this. They all mean well. Mm. But we don't seem to get the right results. You would say France. Do they do it differently in France? Well, there's an element of people paying for some of elements of the, the service that they receive. Is that means tested? That's means tested. And I think this is a conversation that we're, most governments are really reticent to have. 
that unfortunately, if you're paying 180 billion for a service that's not improving, something has to change. Now, most of that money goes on salaries or medicines. So you either think about the staffing element or you think about the medicines that we give out to individuals and getting them on a more efficient economical basis. Now, no one, whether it's Labour or who potentially are likely to come in in the next, if there is an election, or the existing government, are willing to have a really important conversation about how we get better value for our money. And this, got to remember, this is all of our money. Our tax and our national insurance yeah. contributions go into this service, and many of us, as the horrible statistics are showing, are not getting the service that we expect. Charles, to pick up on what you said, though, and I guess it's a question for you, it is a hot potato between political parties, isn't it? Like, the, the Labour know that people trust them with the NHS, Tories know that people trust them with the economy. Those are the two age-old... You know, uh, yeah, exactly. large, yeah, those are the two age-old yeah. kind of adages, right? So no-one wants to have that. No-one wants to be the first party to have that conversation, presumably. Nobody dares have it. Nobody is into long-term thinking <laughs> of any of these issues. I mean, there are lots of other big issues that actually need long-term thinking. Defence is a, an important one. But uh, the problem is, for every government, is that they're looking to the next election. No government can last more than five years. There's always going to be an election. Mm. So actually trying to come up with solutions that go over several parliaments yeah. is not attractive. And so we're all... That's a shame. It That's is a shame. Systemically and so also we're broken, locked in the, what we started with is, has to be the best thing. Mm. There's a play at the National Theatre at the moment in London about Anarin Bevan, the sort of founders yeah. of yeah. the National yeah. Health Service. And we, understandably, we worship at that shrine. But that was 75 years mm. ago now. And most things do evolve. And really what we need is a cross-party consensus. And maybe it'll happen after the election. People saying, actually, there's a limit to the amount of money. There's a limit to the number of people who can do this. How are we going to solve this long term? Can we actually begin to look at how over 10, 20, 15 mm. years we can begin to change this so it becomes more effective? Do you think there's an argument for that? As in, do you think that political parties... Like, you know, in the same way when they made the Bank of England independent? Yes. Do you think there's a, there was a world where there's a, a cross-party panel that looks at the NHS that, 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 it, that has that governance? The difficulty is that we have the House of Lords, which has debates which are cross-party and cross-political, which should be and able to really inform. advise, though, can't but, they? They, but that's the whole point. They should be taking the advice from those cross-party party political conversations to say, what are we going to do about the problem now? Because the difficulty is, when we're having conversations about doctor strikes, people are dying. When we're having conversations about um, staff and nursing, people are dying. Yeah. And at the heart of it, that is the bit that should be taking the most amount of precedence in these conversations, rather than which party is going to get the most political votes on this, because people's lives are at risk mm. and we need to rely on an NHS. Nobody at the moment is offering any particular solution. They're all just saying, we're going to get the waiting list down, we're going to deal with this, we're going to spend more money, mm -hmm. we're going to get more people... That's all they're saying. They're not actually looking at why, despite all the extra people and all the extra money, mm. it still isn't delivering as it should. And people tinker with the system as the years go by. Let's, have, let's try trusts for mm. a while. Let's make it more local for a while. Mm. Let's make the GPs independent. Mm. But none of these things seem to have solved it. That's the dilemma. And we are frightened of looking at the experience of other countries because we say, NHS made in Britain, this is what we do. Mm. But we don't get as good a results as many other countries that do it slightly differently. But because we have that history and that pride around the NHS, yeah. I think that's why we should spend more time having those difficult conversations. Introduce some level of competition. Get individuals in different areas competing at each other to get better. Because unfortunately, when you have this trust system, you're guaranteed a line of income, and that may not produce the best result because you know what's coming, so therefore you don't really... But the, the, the flip side to that, as soon as you introduce competition, you introduce the, the prospect of in corners mm. for, for the best I, 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 don't, I don't think so. I think there is a chance of that, that's, that's to be clear. But if you had two individuals or two individuals trust in an area who knew that their budget next year was dictated by who got the best outcomes and it was clear what those outcomes were, actually competition could be a great thing about innovation, around creating different which are area-specific to that area, rather than thinking about, oh, I do need to cut corners, and therefore I don't have to worry, I can park that down to the side. We are seeing now that the current system is not working. The reality is 180 billion is an extraordinary amount of money, and not getting the service that we want, and people something are dying. has to change. Yeah. And people, people are, dying, are dying, which is the crux of it, really. Uh, let's move on to another story. Uh, according to a recent survey, apparently getting divorced is costing people a lot of money. So what people are actually doing now is they're not getting divorced because it costs too much money. Mm. What they're actually doing now is they're staying married but having affairs. What do you think what about this, like... <laughs> What Literally staying married. Yeah. 
But like they know they're having affairs. Do you think or not? Is that mm, a... It's a good, it's good. That's I mean, question, it's a good point. It? I think they probably would know because you've separated. Yeah, yeah. However, do you know what? Let's just stay married. <clears throat> For the cash. It costs too much yeah, money. Yeah. Well, yeah. but then the, you can go. Divorces are at their lowest level since 1971, and what is posited here is that every divorce costs money. Uh, the average about is only fifteen thousand pounds. I'm surprised it's that little. Oh. Mm. So people are choosing not to get divorced. Uh, Eighty thousand couples le legally split up in 2022, which is down thirty percent from mm. 2021. So people have found that we're staying together because we can't afford to get divorced. But I, I do fancy a little bit of nookie. So um, <laughs> if it's if it's all right by you, uh, the post person, postie has offered. I'm, I'm actually giving a specific example of some friends of mine. Let's not go into that. This is uh, a great is story. This, uh, wherever you're going with. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not get out now. And this is no, not. We don't know who they are, so tell we, us what's going on. Go on. No, I don't think because they know who they are. <laughs> they know who they are. <laughs> it was so a... they're not getting divorced, but they're having little affairs. Yes. But do they tell their their? I, I gave away too much by mentioning Posty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, if both parties agree, well, I, yeah, would say, I would say. But can house. I say we are both married people, yeah. and yeah. our experience is that on the whole, <laughs> affairs lead to unhappiness. Mm. So joking, joking apart, uh, it, actually, there's a lot of sadness underlying all yeah. this. Um, but at the same time, we, we like to smile. Uh, um, polyamory, apparently, is a new thing among young people. Have you heard about this? What is that? Polyamory. I, I thought it was a kind of wallpaper thing. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I need to put that on the wall. I need some more polyamory. No, polyamory is where you have a variety of lovers. Oh, yes, I like this. Yeah, you like the idea. But <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it, though. But no, of course. No, I'm very jealous. Oh. Very jealous. Uh, yes. I like one person. Exactly. The affair thing wouldn't work. No, but polyamory can be one person at a time. Oh. You know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. Oh, yeah, a lot about this, you know. Well, I've taken an interest. Is it like what Carol Vorderman does? <laughs> Pretty much. Like she's the got sound, five yeah. on the go. I so yes. I suppose that's, that's what she yes. is. See, yeah. Charles, the thing about Charles is if Charles wanted to have an affair, he could easily get away with it in plain sight because he spends half his life on a barge with Maureen Lippman and then he's watching <laughs> telly with Sheila Hancock. Exactly. And then he's <laughs> that's doing the way to do it in plain, in plain in sight. sight. <laughs> in plain sight. <laughs> But then Tim, don't you think? Don't you think that more people should work at their marriages, maybe 100%. date a little bit more 100%. instead of like just giving up and saying, you know what, just date a little bit more, talk to each other. Listen, what relationships are not easy, and I think this Mills and Boone. It's a journey. I'm, I'm showing my age now. No, you're um, right. This, this romanticised element of how your relationship should be is lovely, but the reality is there's ups and downs. If yeah. I leave my socks on the floor or the toilet seat up, there's going to be a bad couple of uh, conversations Tim, in the household. You're, you, well, you're not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a guy. Look how so, clean but, uh, right. no, like, it can, it can, be resplendent you are. No, that that shirt design so... I, I, I wish. No way I wish. Every marriage, I wish. I wish. Every, every marriage has got... its ups and downs. Now, that's where I try to kiss <laughs> you. Why have you got a spot of makeup because on your shoulder? Was, this, 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 is my, this is where I love oh. hugging you, you see, and this is the mark. Well, that's, uh, this I is know, not I'm well aware of that. that this is not getting washed now. Are you it's sure that's washed. me and not some other woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'd never cheat on you, Alice. Many <laughs> years ago, my father said to me when I was newly married, if you are ever tempted to have an affair, mm. I said, ooh, really, Dad? <laughs> he said, he said, I'll tell you what you should do if you want to have an affair. Have an affair with your wife. wife. Yes! yes. Have an Just with your recreate wife. the whole magic of it. Yes. Make some illicit dates with your wife. Mm. Phone her up unexpectedly, say, are you free for lunch? Don't give up. Actually, have an affair with your wife. Love it. So if you're, if post is left by now, darling, <laughs> I will be home. I think at about eleven thirty. <laughs> See you then. Thank you, Jen. Uh, after the break, discussing more today's top stories with Giles and Tim, including John Rossi's shocking shower revelations. Yeah, and are you on the quest for a brighter smile? From colour correcting toothpaste to LED lights, Dr. Trishala will be revealing which at-home treatments will really give you whiter teeth. We'll see you soon.